Hey guys and welcome to another Affliction episode. Today we're taking a look at a Fallen Protecting kill from a guy killing 14 heroic bosses. Still a lot to learn from it, so hang on tight while we walk through some of the playstyle errors and I'll give some tips and advice how to handle the fight throughout and towards the end. First off, I want to say you always need to play Arguments Darkness for this fight. We do not need Kel Jaden's Cunning, so make sure you spec ADB4 since this guy didn't. If we take a look at his opener, something from the previous workshop happens again. When we first apply a set of dots with Soulburn Soul Swap, we do not wish to cast a full Malefic Grasp in the opener. You waste too much time and you get less chance to proc Expanded Mind. You always cast Malefic Grasp and rechannel after a tick. Maximum do this twice before applying dots so we can start swapping them around. Two full casts of Malefic Grasp with all ticks is just a waste in the opener, especially if Expanded Mind didn't proc. Now you have three targets on Protectors, so you have around 7 to 8 stacks when we reach the third target. You should always apply Haunt over Malefic Grasp if you have two shards left. That way we can still apply Soulburn Soul Swap on maximum stacks of Black Blood before Metagen Berserking or similar buff fates. Always apply at lower stacks of Black Blood if you won't have Metagem or something like that up for the 10th stack of Black Blood. In this situation he does it correct and applies at 9 stacks with Metagem still being active. Instead of applying them with 10 stacks and no Metagem. Now next up is the fact we applied all dots with as many procs as possible. Now either soul swap around fast to get the big dots rolling on everything, or if you have some shards left start casting horn between your cast. On a fight like Protectors, a huge portion of your RNG is from getting a ton of shards in the opener, so we roll the big opener dots with horn on every target. As you can see he has 2 shards left and he chooses to stand still for the 3 seconds instead of casting something between, or soul swap instantly. Next up is transitions. To do really good DPS you need to transition all at once so you get a ton of targets. Make sure you swap to all the targets as soon as possible. Don't bother with delaying soul swaps if there is a new target without dots. By this time we should already have used all shards on haunting the bosses before transition so we don't end up with shards in this phase where we can't use them anyway. At this moment he has 4 shards and decides to cast Malefic Grasp between casts. Always prioritize Haunt above Malefic Grasp. Malefic Grasp isn't much DPS, it's just something extra while we wait to exhale. You have to use shards on open at dots. It's 35% damage you lose on every target when you are bursting for millions. When he starts to do it, it's already far too late and we're about to hit the next stage on Protectors when our first UA is about to fade. We need to renew it so we keep swapping around 3 dots. He had a Metagem proc where you can argue if it's worth to override UA at 4-5 to five seconds left because our meta is about to fade. If we include the cast time we would go down to 2-3 to three seconds. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal to roll it on with the Metagem. Instead he chooses not to but he gets another Metagem proc and the bosses transition so we have to soul swap around. This is where it would have been good to have a full unstable affliction rolling. Nevertheless you definitely need to renew it with the second Metagem. There's sub 2 seconds left on Yuhe. He chooses to ignore it and keep swapping around without unstable affliction. That's not really worth it. Be sure you get your UA up and swap around. This is where you can make the difference on protectors by getting the biggest RNG of your life and having trinket procs at these times when we need to renew dots. Uptime doesn't really matter of trinkets, it's all about getting procs at the right times to be the king. He continues to swap around with the corruption now about to fade as well. We don't want to renew all 3 dots because we want to keep agony for full duration. But you have to renew UA and corruption when they fade. He gets a wrath proc. Sadly a tad too early since Agony still has time left, but it's still not bad. Make sure we soul burn soul swap at this point. Now if you watch my previous video, you know how we do not wish to renew dots on a target that doesn't have dots running because we don't take advantage of the pandemic effect. Now in this case because he isn't renewing UA or corruption, we renew 10 stack wrath on a target so they only get a shorter duration. Now on a fight like protectors you can extend their duration a lot by swapping around. This means it doesn't hurt us as much because there is a chance we will get better procs and lining up more cooldowns soon. But it's still not optimal if you get a bad period without procs and you didn't take advantage of the pandemic effect. The next black blood proc happens pretty early after the one we renew dots with. In this case you can consider if it's worth to renew them again at 10 stacks because the ones we have running are only running with 10 stacks anyway. You can also just choose to renew UA at higher stacks because it's the dot that runs out first. Also there is not much reason because we know we have Dark Soul and Expanded Mind coming up very soon. He chooses not to and gets another proc after that again. 
these procs are actually close to useless because we can't really use them for much when Darkshold is about to come off cooldown with Expanded Mind being lined up with it. But here's the funny part, 3 procs in a row means he will get a stacking up black block while Darkshold is off cooldown. We know Expanded Mind is off ICD, which means all we should do right now is to force it to proc. This is the golden moment on protectors that you need to pray for every week. Having Black Blood line up with the second Dark Soul and a Wrath proc on top. Just spam Malefic Grass ticks and rechannel after each cast to try to force the proc of the Trinket. Luckily he gets the proc at 6 stacks, but he doesn't pay attention at all to the procs and manages to have a Soul Swap active when he wants to Soul Burn it. This is the only moment you need to not be AFK on Protectors. It's the golden card to get procs during Expanded Mine because we always have Dark Soul lined up together with it. Nothing else really matters that much. We need to potion here as well as it's our second burst window and if he had a Mesa Gem too that would be perfect. He manages to activate Soul Burn during inhaling to reapply dots and he can't apply a new set because he's trying to exhale on a target he inhaled from. You need to be sharp in this situation, it's not hard at all. Just make sure you stop doing the soul swap trick while you need to reapply dots. There's no need to extend duration when we are about to refresh them anyway. Instead he ends up having dots without pandemic effect and only expanded mind and dark soul. Huge mistakes that cost us an insane armor of damage. He gets a fourth wrath proc during the dark soul and with just a few seconds left on expanded mind, he could have tried to renew the dots before expanded mind faded because he only has a rather short duration on UA and Corruption. But in this case he doesn't do it, we still need to value renewing UA and Corruption with Dark Soul and Black Blood. We would need 5 or above stacks of Black Blood before it has the same value or more as Expanded Mind. Because he fucked up the whole setting up dots previously, he only has Expanded Mind Black Blood and Herbalism Life Blood running on the dots. In this case he could easily have just applied at least UA and Corruption with Black Blood and Dark Soul but even renewing all 3 dots wouldn't have made the world's difference. He only has 8 seconds left on UA and 12 on Corruption, so there's no reason not to renew the dot. He chooses not to renew which means soon we will have to pray for more Trinket procs when our UA and Corruption fades. This is why it's worth it to renew even by losing Herbalism effect, because we know the chance of getting another Black Blood proc after 4 in a row is close to none. On top of that Expanded Mine and Dark Soul has a 2 minute cooldown, so we won't have to worry about that either. So it's actually beneficial to sometimes override something just because we predict we won't get more procs and have no cooldowns coming up. He basically just tends to ignore renewing dots when they're about to fade and keep rolling them until they fade. This is not the way to do it. You don't renew all 3 dots and override a powerful agony, but you have to keep running dots with the best possible procs throughout the fight for the longest time and pray to our Jesus that we, he will reward you. Because what happens here is that he simply has to renew dots with no procs, which is what we don't want to do on protectors. We never wish to run dots with zero procs, that's useless. He also renews agony with 12 seconds left, which still had our powerful procs. Don't ever do that with 12 seconds left and no procs active. Also when a new target appears, always dot them first and try to avoid redotting the target you already did. After that you should always run a cast between the soul swaps. The fight is super simple and there's only a few moments we need to focus on. Right now we're just waiting to bait another proc so we can get some powerful procs rolling because he messed it up so many times. He gets a wrath proc and again swaps around agony without corruption or unstable affliction. There's just no reason to focus on this when we have such bad procs running. He managed to do the same thing when he soul swap at 10 stacks, I believe because he didn't realize he had no shards. Awareness is key here, ideally always build up dots so you have the normal duration. So when you start to dot up around 8 to 10 stacks with Corruption first, followed by UA and Agony, so UA and Agony gets around 10 stacks and Corruption less. It's not a big deal to manually redot in this scenario, or simply trick is to drain soul the mob while Black Blood stacks up, so we get a shard. Nothing really happens from then on, because he just swaps around unbuffed dots. The boss is about to die, but we know we will get one more Dark Soul and Expanded Mine. A quick tip here is always to start ignoring the Soul Swap trick when you are about to renew with more powerful procs anyway. There's no reason for him to waste some seconds when he could just have renewed with Dark Soul and Expanded Mine. Instantly use Dark Soul together with Expanded Mine or when possible and start rolling those dots around. The boss is so low that we don't have to worry too much about Soul Swap trick anymore. We should mainly focus around getting shards and keeping Haunt up. Stop wasting time with soul swapping around if there's no time left of the fight and just drain soul to get shards. When Haunt is running on the target you can swap around a bit to extend the duration but swapping around dots on 1% is a waste since we only do it to extend that duration anyway. I want to point out that you don't really need to make affliction harder than it is. There's a few simple things we need to keep track of during a fight and rest of the time we spam one button. Always make sure you keep track of procs during the timers where we need to renew first unstable affliction and corruption. 
and latest agony. There are major parts of when we get big dots up. That's mainly around Expanded Mine and Dark Soul in the hope that Mental Gem or Black Blood procs together with them. Rest of the time we spam Soul Swap with a cast between for the entire fight with no reason to pay much attention to procs except if you're rolling around with lesser ones. It's very very simple and you need to make it very simple. It's always better to apply things with slightly less power than fucking it up completely and missing the entire window. Don't be scared to stop when we are applying dots, so you don't end up in a situation where you are swapping around instead of renewing dots. Affliction is simple, protectors is simple, don't make it harder than it is and just focus on the few scenarios during a fight that matters for DPS. It's RNG as hell to get the procs lining up at the correct times and your guild really needs to transition everything properly while having fast kill timers. Now thanks for watching another episode of the workshop, let me know what you think and what you would like to see in the future in the comment section below.